From Comey to WikiLeaks, from the KGB to the KKK, from misogyny to the NRA, your girl Hillary has been a busy, busy bee blaming everyone under the gosh darn diddly sun for her loss in the 2016 election. Since the 2016 election. At this point, quite frankly, it would be shorter to make a list of people whom Hillary, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself, Clinton, hasn't blamed for her own shortcomings as a presidential candidate rather than has, but the internet didn't diagnose me with mild autism for nothing, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are. Do you remember the political whiplash that followed an election not even the most prestigious of polling institutions ever saw coming? Donald J. Trump is now President of the United States. President Obama is the next President. Mr. Trump, at the moment, steps I do. And let me tell you, absolutely no one hesitated to make laundry lists of who was truly at fault for such an unprecedented Aka excuse me moment on the grand world stage. Least of all the token lady of the hour who wasn't herself. Hillary, Diane, Rodham, Clinton. First up, the Bernie Bros. As the current year's Democratic candidates for president are slowly whittled down to a rigged contest between two old white males, oh, the irony, once again, we find ourselves with a rich socialist in these United States and the other, an establishment-backed and ex-member of the White House's inner circle, are pitted against each other in a fight to the death, we'll see, once again on the national stage, where, of course, we have a no-holds-barred contest, and it looks like the Bernie bros are at it again this time around as well. Nothing has changed. I wanted to tell what happened, and the primary was part of what happened. Um, I won a landslide victory in the primary. I know what it's like to win, and I know what it's like to lose, and when I lost to Barack Obama, I immediately turned around, I endorsed him, I worked for him, I convinced my supporters to vote for him. I didn't get the same uh, respect from my primary opponent. And a lot of his supporters continue to harass and you know, really uh, go after my supporters all the time. Hillary, it's my turn, Clinton, is feeling the ghost of Burns past as she admits to herself that the Clinton campaign and all of her supporters were in fact bombarded by the resistance, the relentless passions of Bernie bros on the field of politics all those years ago. Despite the sheer force of their resistance, however, the Bernie bros eventually would have to fall in line or be left behind inevitably, let's be honest. And that might be the case here as well. In the wake of the Bernie loss, the Bernie resistance fell and felt cheated. And rather than electing their first woman presidents, they elected to turn their backs on the DNC entirely, rather than play into the rigged establishment that they had fought so hard to overcome. And then there was Brexit, the vote that told the world that Britain had had enough of the United Nations, somehow acting as a preamble that would set the stage for Trump's victory over Hillary in 2016. How, you may ask? Uh, because my fake news. That's how, obviously. But that's not the only nonsense that Hillary Clinton was up against. We, of course, cannot forget the deep dark web, where in fact all things Pepe hide in dark shadows, lurking and biding their time, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Clinton hasn't forgotten. And certainly, she can see the parallels to her own campaign once again. The presence of Tulsi Gabbard on the DNC stage, where she is a Russian operative, working in tandem with the dark web to help elect orange men. I think it's going to be the same as 2016. Don't vote for the other guy. You don't like me? Don't vote for the other guy because the other guy's going to do X, Y, and Z or the other guy did such terrible things. And I'm going to show you in these, you know, flashing videos that appear and then disappear and they're on the dark web and nobody can find them. But you're going to see them and you're going to see that person doing these horrible things. They're also going to do third party again. And I'm not making any predictions, but I think they've got their eye on somebody who's currently in the Democratic <laughs> primary and are grooming her to be the third party candidate. Mm -hmm. She's a favorite of the Russians. They have a bunch of sites and bots and other ways of supporting her mm -hmm. so far. And that's assuming Jill Stein will give it up, which she might not, because she's also a Russian right. uh, asset. Yeah. yeah, she's a Russian asset. I mean, totally. And so 
They know they can't win without a third party candidate. Tell me it's not so that Mama Tull sees a Russia. And speaking of the Russians, we absolutely cannot have Hillary on the sorest loser to ever have lost an election. Clinton hemming and hawing about losing the 2016 election without the mention of the Ren Menace itself, Russia. Those damned hackers and their infiltration techniques, how dare they expose the DNC so viciously. The nerve, the absolute odd audacity of the Russians. I mean, without the Russians, obviously, no one would have ever known that the DNC had a non-neutral agenda against one of their own candidates running for the presidency, and things wouldn't have turned out so disastrously for one of the other candidates that they were backing. Hmm. And of course, since we're talking about Russia, we can't forget to talk about Julian Assange of WikiLeaks, that rat bastard himself. What the heckin' was he thinking to post such sensitive information gathered from the Russians for all the world to gawk at stupidly? Outrageous. I say outrageous. That he could ever think that voters have any right to know that the Democratic National Convention was a bunch of manipulative assholes vying exclusively for a single candidate in an effort to take the choice of who they wanted to have for their presidents away from the voters completely. But wait, there's more. While we're at it, let's talk about the white women. Where are they at? The answer is wherever their white husbands dictate that they be at any given point in time, obviously. Of course, and that is obviously not the voting booths. Voting for the women candidate in 2016. Can you believe it? We do not do well with white men and we don't do well with married white women. Um, and part of that is a, an identification with the Republican Party uh, and a, uh, a, a sort of ongoing pressure uh, to uh, vote the way that your husband, your boss, uh, your son, whoever, uh, believes you should. At least. According to Hillary, I married a white man, Clinton. Hillary. <clears throat> Did Bill tell you that you could partake in all of this nonsense? Did he give you permission? Like, just, just checking. I know you don't have a son, so that's not an issue, but Bill is still kicking and screaming, right? The conflict doesn't just stop with white women, obviously, and their subservience to their husbands. Oh no. In fact, it's misogyny as a whole that we have to thank for all of this utter nonsense. Were you a victim of misogyny? And why do you think you lost the majority of the white female vote? Just to give you a tiny little preview, uh, yes, I do think it played a role. I think other things did as well. Every day that goes by, we learn more about uh, some of the uh, unprecedented interference. So much misogyny. All of the misogyny. So many misogyny. <sighs> it's suffocating, honestly. Oh, sexism. Of course, we can't forget that because women in the current year or in any year ever, quite possibly, have never had any hope of overcoming the glass ce ceiling that's been placed above them perpetually by the menfolk who wish to see them struggle barefoot in the kitchen and naked cooking dinner with a litter of children surrounding them at all times, right? <laughs> And of course, if that's not enough to convince you of the fact that Hillary, why won't the goddamn American voters fall in line, Clinton was wrongfully robbed of this year election in 2016, we can't forget about the blatant voter suppression Wisconsin voters suffered at the voting booths. Which, I mean, let's be honest, if that were the case, then I think we would have a bigger issue at hand here, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, think about it. The DNC. The mainstream media, they just spent the last three to four years of our lives beating into us and to death the horse that is Russia, the Russian narrative, Russian interference and the reason that Hillary Clinton lost the 2016 election rather than harping on the very horrible, apparently, news that Americans had their civil liberties violated by Wisconsin state. That people were being turned away due to directly their skin color and their age is despicable and a direct systematic example of oppression that one would think the Democratic Party would be jumping on like mad to fix. But no. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just another voter ID law. Obviously. No big deal. Carry on. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see here, based on the host of examples that I have provided you with in this video, it's obvious, it's apparent that Hillary Clinton's loss during the 2016 election to Donald John Trump has 
absolutely nothing to do with her as a candidate, her likability as a whole, or the alienation of half the potential constituency that one time and the policies that she ported, or, or for that matter, the track record that she has as a public servant. Rather, the fault lies entirely on the outside factors beyond her personal control that greatly influenced the perceptions and the abilities of American voters from having Clinton be our esteemed God Emperor as opposed to the orange man himself. Hi, guess what time it is? Unboxing time! I don't know why I said it like that. Here we are, gentlemen. Ladies. Robots and variants thereupon. I have with me right here a package from the Royal Royal Mail that I will be opening up here today. And it looks like it's already got one of those tabular things that allows me to just easily rip it apart. Yeah. It's in a nice red box. I like red boxes. I like boxes in general, actually. Apparently, I will need the scissors. We bow and scissors. Very dangerous combination, I must say. Oh, oh shit. Oh shit, I opened up the wrong direction. Okay, I got it. So, we have a whole bunch of lovely little packet thingies, but first, the envelope. I opened the package upside down. I'm so sorry. I think I know who this is from. It's from Cavalier. He sent me things from overseas. Holy shit! Thank you for the petty cash. I appreciate that. Hello, Weibo. Future congratulations on achieving your degree. Enclosed is $100 for celebration or starve off student starvation. Your impersonation of mini AOC was very good. Did you know that? But if you're going to peer over your glasses, you have to say monocles to look both smart and beautiful. All the best in your future endeavors, Cavalier. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate this. This is going directly into savings. I promise you that I have an entire account set up specifically just for future Weibo use of shenanigans. <sighs> okay, so as for the rest of this lovely gift, thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Uh, we have an assortment of lovely edible candies. Okay, all right. Oven baked cashews. Henry Goodies Curious Confectionery. Strawberry licorice. Oh my god. Okay, that's gonna get some use. Let's see. Kit Kats. In the shape of a little bunny. A little bunny rabbit. Isn't that adorable? Fruit pastilles? Pastilles. Can you resist the chew? What do I want to eat first? That is the question that I must be asking myself. What are these? Wagon wheels, Jamie? Holy shit. I love it when you guys send me candy so much. You have no idea. Lil O'Brien's passion about chocolate. Chocolate desserts. Oh, yes. Yes. You know, little known fact about you, Lil Weibo, is yes, she absolutely loves her gummy bears. Or peens in some cases. But she also absolutely adores chocolate. Specifically, like, peanut butter chocolate type things. But chocolate nonetheless. Except for dark chocolate. But that's okay. I can still eat it. I just don't enjoy it nearly as much. Why are we having trouble opening? What's going on here? <laughs> it's also tape shut. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a goofball. <sighs> so we have hazelnut tort, passion fruit, posset, bonof pie, creme brulee, raspberry infusion, key lime pie. Ooh. The creme brulee is something that I want to try. We're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Uh, yeah. Okay. First bite. Mmm. 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 Very good. I'm gonna stop before I get too naughty. Mmm! Arrow, peppermint and arrow, orange. I remember, I think, getting these last year and they were very good, but I haven't tried the orange ones yet. 
It's a sharing bar. Well, that's good because I live with Balik, and even though he doesn't, he pretends like he doesn't eat sweets. He'll probably dive into these as well. Okay, I'm gonna stop before I eat my weight in chocolate. Cavalier, thank you so much for your gift, and I really appreciate it. If any of you out there want to send me something in the mail to open and unbox on this channel, the address is down in the description below. That address, I believe, is good until May, at which point in time I'll be looking for a new P.O. box, not in the state of Indiana. It'll be in Illinois, or Wisconsin, or somewhere. I don't know yet. We'll see. It really depends on several factors, but <sighs> thank you so much. All right, until next week, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna put these scissors away before I accidentally snip my hand open again. And <laughs> goodbye.